Good afternoon class. In today's video, what I'd like to do is to talk about electric potential. This video will focus only on the conceptual basis of electric potential and not on the, the mathematical basis of it. Um, those equations will be done in a future video. So for this one, there is a comparison that can be made between electric potential, also known as voltage, and gravitational potential energy because, again, there's potential in, in both of their names. However, that is about where it ends. There are, again, a few more similarities that, that creep in between the two, but they're not exactly the same, and especially in the case of electric potential, because it gets, um, a lot of times people will say, this is potential energy, and that is not the case. That is totally not the case. Gravitational potential is energy because you will find that the unit for gravitational potential is joules. However, with electric potential, you find that the unit is joules per coulomb. So what it really is, is really what they say. It's electric potential. This, when you have a high voltage, it has the potential to drop down really fast into the ground state or the zero, um, the zero voltage um, state. However, that's not the same as potential energy because this potential energy here is, uh, and as the way I've illustrated it, is that you're on a cliff, someone on top of the cliff has high potential energy, and the person at the bottom of the cliff has low potential energy. So in this case, this energy can be, um, this energy is there, you, you know, and, and it is an energy, but it's not, it's not based on you know, energy per kilogram or any, any other unit. Whereas electric potential is based on, it's the amount of energy that's on each charge. And as more and more charges collect on you, the greater that potential has for it to um, drop. And that, that movement is actually what's really the scary thing. So one of the analogies that um, I'll, I'll use in this one, even though I illustrated this with a cliff, the analogy that I like to use, which actually does hold true for both of these, is being on an airplane. If you're on an airplane, by itself, the, nobody would bat an eye at how, in how much danger you're at just by sitting on, or just by being in an airplane. Even if it's at 35,000 feet, even if it's like miles or kilometers above the ground, it doesn't matter. No amount of gravitational potential energy is going to be dangerous to you exactly by virtue of it being a higher gravitational potential energy. However, if you fall, that's a problem because it is not, it's not being at that height that actually matters. It's the drop that actually will, um, could, could get you hurt, could potentially kill you. In the same way with electricity, you can be at a million volts. That actually doesn't matter. Like even if somebody, even if you see signs that say danger, high voltage, you know, or like danger, millions of volts, you know, and it's true that it's dangerous if you don't take the right precautions, but if you take the right precautions, being at a million volts really doesn't mean anything. You know, it just means that it's like being at the, it's like being in an airplane. There's nothing wrong with it so long as you, as long as you descend slowly, carefully, and in a controlled manner so that you don't just drop out of the sky. That is the same thing when it comes to electric potential. The difference in this between this analogy and this analogy is that gravitational potential energy, when it, you have a, a lot of gravitational potential energy, it can take seconds to minutes before you actually realize the, the consequences of changing that high, exchanging that high potential energy for low potential energy. With, with electricity, however, with voltage in particular, you can go from a high voltage to a low voltage in a matter of milliseconds, faster than that snap, in fact. So, you know, that's where the problem is. So keep this in mind. It is not voltage that kills you. It is current. Electric current is the thing that will actually harm you and, and could do lots and lots of damage to you. Um, the other way that I, the reason why these two, um, 
these two um, illustrations don't really match is that your body actually has ways of compensating for that drop in um, potential, gravitational potential energy because we have muscles, bones, we have ligaments, we have all kinds of structures in our body that can prevent damage to our vital organs so that you know we don't die or get, or get hurt so much that we're incapacitated. Whereas with electric potential, our body is filled with electric wiring. They're called nerves, neurons, things that, you know, the, all these, all these um, electric wires that help you think because these are, that's the biological circuitry of, of your body. If you fired off all your, you sent an electric signal all the way through all of your nerves at once, it could potentially kill you if not do permanent damage to the, to the inside of your body, not just the outside, the inside, and all of your vital organs would get damaged by it. So that's where the danger is. This one we have some, albeit not as much, depending on, where you, depending on how much gravitational potential energy you have. Um, your defenses may not be that good, but still, you have defenses. Whereas in electric potential, there are no defenses. If you get shocked, you get shocked. And you better hope that it doesn't hit one of the vital organs like your heart, because then you'd just be dead. That would, that's basically how it goes. So what does it mean? Now, you know, now that I've sufficiently scared you with that, let's talk about what it means to be at a high potential or a high electric potential, a high voltage, so that you can avoid the situation. Or if you are in that situation, you know how to, you, you can at least say, OK, I better take precautions so that I can either either not be in the situation or if you like I said if you are in the scenario you can at least you know be safer as you as you um, drop down your voltage slowly but and carefully so how do you do that well what is well, in fact what is how do you get to a high voltage you would get to a high voltage um, using and the in this illustration in this illustration and I recognize that this illustration is not very good. I apologize. I am not an art teacher. I am a physics teacher. Okay. Um, in this in this illustration, this is a Van de Graaff generator, and what it does is it's um, it's generating a bunch of electric charges. And the person in this in this um, in this illustration is touching the Van de Graaff generator. This what this does is it transfers all of those electric charges from here on the Van de Graaff generator to the person, I mean, it's still on the Van de Graaff generator, but it's now flowing into the person as well because the person is at a lower voltage than the Van de Graaff generator. So when the Van de Graaff generator, you know, it di it'll discharge a little bit into the person, but because we're much bigger than a, a Van de Graaff generator, it gives us a little bit more, you know, the current that would go through us is not that, is not that big, so it's actually fine especially if it's just building up inside of our bodies. And that's why this person is standing on a wooden stool. Now, I know you might say, Mr. Archu, I don't know how you could possibly call that a stool. Again, I apologize. My, my artistic skills are not very good. However, that's why I, I try to label everything. That's why I call this wood right over here. So, it's, so as, you, as you can see, this, what, he, what this person is standing on is an insulator. Now there is a difference between how, uh, what, how conductors and insulators work, and I will save that for a, a future video. So what's the difference between this picture and this picture? In this one, the person is standing on an insulator, and so because of that, all the, the voltage just builds up in their body. And that's fine. As long as they can discharge it in a safe manner, they're fine. However, this person over here they're at a low potential because they're touching the ground. And that's what, and that's why that actually comes in um, when you have a low potential energy. What you're doing is you're grounding yourself or you're, you're creating a pathway for the electric charges that are generated by this Van de Graaff generator to go in, into the ground and spread out and come back to some semblance of um, normal, which is as low a poten uh, electric potential as possible. So this person is basically now a conduit for the charges on the Van de Graaff generator to flow through them back into the ground and return everything to a, an uncharged state. So this one, the person is not allowing any of those charges to flow, so it's just building up on them. 
And this person is allowing the charges to flow through them back into, into the ground. So what I'll do is I will also add a little bit of a video to, to show this in real life. And then after that, um, we'll go into more of the um, we'll go into more of the equation side of it so that you can see how to how to get some um, manipulate how to manipulate the variables, how to work the equations and how they actually interact with each other on a more mathematical sense. So that concludes the conceptual version of electric potential. Good luck in your studies and may the force be with you.